Are you implying that any jealousy I might have felt toward Pierce is rational? Perhaps irrational wasn't the best word to use. What does that mean? If you're so worked up about Brooke and Pierce getting together, why don't you marry her? I just might, and sooner than you might think. Well, you have my blessing. Thank you. Darrell, I know you care about him, um, and you'll miss him. Goodbye, Adam. I hope that you can work your way through this and find a healthy new life yourself. Don't worry. I know where he went and where the blame lies. Well, that's a good start. I think it was Pogo who once said, we have met the enemy and he is us. Good luck. Goodbye. Jerk. So Adam thinks I blame myself. Well, fine. Let him. I left all my options open. I don't need Adam getting in my way. I have served on the Pine Valley School Board for 16 years, ever since my son Gregory was in 10th grade. Did you vote to end the teaching career of Michael Mullaney? Yes, I did. Mr. Breck, the principal, reported to the school board that Mr. Delaney was using unapproved, inappropriate, and inflammatory materials in his class. Well, why don't we just take a gander at Exhibit A here. It's a poster from the Holocaust Museum showing different armbands and triangles that were worn by certain parts of the population. The Germans forced them to wear it before and during World War II. Now, is this the unapproved, inappropriate, inflammatory material you're referring to? Yes. Mrs. Nelson, would you explain to the jury why this poster is so offensive? It's not the poster per se. It is the way he used it to introduce a topic which has nothing whatever to do with world history. A topic. Now, uh, what topic exactly might that be? Homosexuality. Mrs. Nelson, would you define history as the branch of knowledge that deals with past events? Yes. Would you claim that uh, there were no gay people involved in past events? I'm sure I have no idea. But I do know that according to the district school's policy, sexuality is only taught in biology and sex ed classes. Mr. Delaney was fired because he was breaking the rules, not because he's homosexual. Is this the world history textbook that is approved by the Pine Valley School System? Yes. The one that's used in Mr. Delaney's classroom? Yes. Well, we're just going to turn to page 255, take a gander at that one. You describe that picture right there. Uh... Well, it's a um, color photograph from the Holocaust Museum showing patches and armbands. You see the uh, yellow star right there and the uh, different color uh, patches? Yes. Yeah, what color are those patches? Pink and black. Do you know what they mean? The Nazis forced homosexuals to wear a pink patch. I, I don't know what the black one is for. The black ones were the ones they forced the lesbians to wear. Oh. Mrs. Nelson, could you explain the fact that this approved world history book contains the same material that the unapproved, inappropriate, inflammatory poster has? Now, why is this one good and that one bad? As I said, it's the way he used it. Thank you. No further questions. Your witness. Your witness, Mr. Golden. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mrs. Nelson. Good afternoon. Would you read the text under the photograph on page 255 from the officially sanctioned World History Book? Go on, please, read it out loud. Oh, uh, <clears throat> a collection of armbands and patches from Auschwitz prison camp, courtesy Holocaust Museum. Does it mention homosexuality? No. Is homosexuality mentioned anywhere in that book? Certainly not. Thank you, Mrs. Nelson. No further questions. 
Recross, Mr. Dillon? No, thank you, Your Honor. You may step down. Call your next witness. We call Laura Kirk. Uh, yeah, um, I, I got a C minus in history last semester, but I'm, I'm lucky I passed it all. Um, in September, my reading skills reeked, but Mr. D noticed, and he helped me. He, he, he worked with me, you know, extra time after school and on weekends, but, but he never, ever made me feel dumb. And now my average is a B. He's just an incredible, really incredible teacher. Did your relationship with Mr. Delaney improve or deteriorate after he used the Holocaust poster to announce it was gay? Well, um, it pretty much stayed the same. You weren't uncomfortable being in the locker room with a known homosexual? Well, um, at first it was kind of weird, but now it's okay. Michael Delaney is uh, a great teacher and a great coach, and I don't care if he's gay. You made a personal announcement of your own recently on television, more specifically on Tad Martin's Cutting Edge, right? Yes, I told everyone I was gay. Did Mr. Delaney have anything to do with that announcement? No. I I've known I was gay a long time. I just never told anyone. Not even Mr. D? No. Um, but I admire Mr. D's courage. I respect him. He's the best teacher I've ever had. Thank you, Kevin. Exactly how long have you known you were gay, Kevin? Oh, since I was a kid. Yeah, but you never told anyone. No. And, until Mr. Delaney made his famous pink triangle speech. Now, be honest, Kevin. Isn't that when you decided you were gay? I'd like a little private word with you, if I may. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to keep our professional and personal lives separate. Cutting your stupid apology had nothing to do with our personal lives. It was fluff. It was ego. It was a plea for pity, and now it's gone. Come on, Liza, you saw the numbers. What, you don't think oh. the audience deserves an apology? You know, you can wear your knees out at home. The audience wants entertainment, not self-flagellation. You know, there is such a thing as owning up to your mistakes. You it's know, okay. Yes, I forgot. The meek will inherit the earth, but not on my station, not when I'm in charge. Yeah, well, I guess it's not going to be your station for long. Oh, you're going to take it from me? I think I could do a better job. How? Going to have everybody wear uniforms, sing kumbaya together every morning? I'm sick of fighting with you. You know, you're a neo-fascist megalomaniac. Why don't you wear the hair shirt at home? Keep it out of the office, will you? And somebody should have rammed a little respect oh. and humility into you a long time you want to ago. You talk about ramming a little humility into me? You want to preach about that now? You want to preach to me about that? This comfortable little perch you've got with the powers of be is going to run this station right They're into like the ground. Truck. Right You're such into an the ground. I see fire. Stop this nonsense right now. You're butting into something that's entirely none of your business. I own this station, Tad. Anything that happens here is my business. Adam, we were simply discussing Tad's ambition. Well, think of me as your commander-in-chief. And you, my trusted lieutenants, are threatening my command with this ridiculous infighting. So it's settled. No more petty backstab. From here on out, it's all out full-scale war. Mortal Kombat, I'll put you both on notice. The top dog position at WRCW is hereby up for grabs. I beg your pardon? You've both thrown your hat in the ring. Wait, I have a signed contract, Adam. With a 26-week option. Now, here are the rules. Wait, this is a fair. You're taking advantage of a personal situation. Liza, well, life a... isn't fair. But here, I make the rules. And I reserve the right to change those rules at any time without notice. And you thought I was a neo-fascist. You were both. Produce the cutting edge. First you, and then you, and then you again. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. At the end of Liza's cycle, we'll compare ratings. The guy with the highest score wins the game. Well, what about the loser? If you lose, you can apply for Tad's job as host. Hmm. Well, I won't lose, but... 
When I win, I win what I already have, Adam. I think we should up the stakes. Well, oh, good. Sounds uh, more interesting all the time. Mm -hmm. If I win, Tad signs a two-year deal to host The Cutting Edge. Ironclad, no options, no outs. Sounds like a win-win situation to me. Oh, who are you kidding? It's your favorite scenario. We who are about to die salute you. Two professionals at each other's throats. Divided loyalties, lust for blood. Sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think deliberately creating tension in the workplace is about as dumb an idea as I've ever heard of. I mean, for one thing, how's anybody going to know who to answer to? Where the buck stops? Whatever happened to United We Stand, Divided We Fall. Are you backing away from this challenge? Already? Well, certainly the written record is clear. There's nothing but praise in every one of these reports. What about the spoken word? Any recriminations from school superintendents, principals, teachers, and the like? Not until I mentioned that under a fascist, white supremacist government like Hitler's, homosexuals like myself were carried off to the gas chambers in droves. After that, things changed. I was accused of using the classroom to promote an agenda. A homosexual agenda? Yes. Were you? No, there is no homosexual agenda that I know of. I was simply using the classroom to teach history, period. The kids understood what happened in those gas chambers, but they couldn't relate it to their own lives, to their own friends and the people around them. It was not a conscious choice. I used who I am to help them learn. I was doing my job, or so I thought. No further questions. You're a witness. Mr. Delaney, as you know, many Americans have never become acquainted with homosexuals, including several members of our jury. So if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about that. Homosexuals have intimate relationships with people of the same sex, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what you do. Yes. Are you in a relationship right now? No, I'm not. Why? Well, Mr. Golden, I haven't found the right man. Are you looking? Not in the classroom, if that's what you're implying. Exactly. Where do you expect to find the right man? Objection, Your Honor. That's irrelevant. Sustained. Move on, please, Mr. Golden. Have you ever marched in a gay pride parade? Once in New York City when I was in grad school. You testified that you don't have a homosexual agenda. Do you have a political one? The only agenda that I have is to teach the truth. Now, if the facts of my personal life offend some of the students in my class, for that I am sorry. In law, truth is the ultimate defense, isn't it, Mr. Golden? You're the teacher. I'm the lawyer. Did you read the handbook of ethics and standards issued by the Pine Valley School System before you signed your contract? Yes. Including section 3, paragraph 2, prior approval of teaching aids? Yes. According to standards and ethics agreed to by you under the terms of your contract, failure to comply with section 3, paragraph 2 can result in what, Mr. Delaney? Dismissal. What you did is grounds for dismissal, isn't it? Yes. Thank you, sir. No more questions. You may step down. We'll take a brief recess. All right. You did good. I just did, hung myself. You did good. Uh, Mr. D, Mr. Dillon. We've uh, got a new witness for you. Since you've seen the light, Palmer. We're happy to have you on our side. Well, Laurel's death convinced me that innocent, upstanding woman was killed simply because she was sitting next to that man in public. Well, Delaney's obviously responsible. We can't have men of his ill teaching in our schools. Amen to that. However, because of the special rights granted him by the liberal, so-called humanist majority on our county commission, our case against him is not as foolproof as we had hoped. That unauthorized poster, that's not enough? How can you imagine? The man is an open homosexual teaching our innocent children, He's and a... we have to find excuses to fire him. He's an abomination. The real reason he was fired was because... Be... he's a pervert. 